I think we are a people walking home. We have the threads of a broken story which we're trying to weave back together again. I think this has happened in my own country. I think it's in Britain. I think it's happening all around the world. It's, I guess it's happening here. In 1984, I was mentored at the beginning of a period of years, mentored by a group of Native Americans. And they were the very first ones who stood in front of me and said, name your tribes. I didn't know what they were speaking about. I, I have no tribes. Name your tribes. And I couldn't. And it was this group of Native Americans who stood in front of me and said, Coritani, Ordovici, Silures, Atrobates, Trinovantes, Quanovii, Ordovici went on, named my British tribes. They said, your story was broken. We've talked with you and shared stuff with you, listened to you, and we realize you don't even know your own history. You do not know the shoulders of the people upon whom you stand. I think we are a, a people walking home, trying to weave together the threads of a broken story. I'm not sure that we even remember what our purpose is. Now, this is so strange to so many older cultures, to indigenous people, many people that I have had the privilege of meeting and learning from. I wonder what we would say if, if somebody came to us and said, what is the purpose of a human life? And we would have, some of us, we would have answers, but would we agree with each other? Is it anything that we really think about? Because if we thought about it, would that not be some of the principles upon which we parent, educate our children, create businesses and the rest? Were we to go to the Coggy Indians of Colombia up in the High Sierra Mountains and we were to ask this question, what is the purpose of a human life? First of all, they'd be extremely confused and, and baffled because their children learn this when they're about three years old. And so they'd, they'd be a little concerned and worried about us and our condition, and perhaps wondering whether we in some way damaged or missed out on something pretty fundamental. But in the end, anyway, with perhaps benevolence and some kindness, they would lean forward and whisper what the Kogi understand to be the purpose of a human life, to care for all living things. What else? To care for all living things. When a people don't know their purpose, when they have no sense of the storyline that they are moving, they're walking on, then how lost can you be? Have we designed businesses based upon that principle to care for all living things? And by the way, of course, for the Kogi, everything is living. Everything is living. And that means we care for everything and everybody. Have we designed our schools, both our school for our very little children as they grow older, the secondary schools, have we designed our universities to care for all living things. I would suggest, you see, I feel that this is, it is at this profound level that we need to begin. And why is this so important now? You see, all through history, People have been killing each other. Countries have been invading. Terrible things have happened. Beautiful things have happened. Civilizations have risen and collapsed and risen again. So somebody said to me in a talk not so long ago, they said, well, hasn't it always been like this? You're, you seem to be inferring that this time 
you know, on earth is in some way special. And I said, yes, I think it is. I think it's a, a hinge period in the entire story of our species. And he said, why? And I said, because our reach has now extended around the world. Everything that we do now has the capacity to span the world, to cover, right, its, wrap its arms right around the world. The oceans are not only polluted, in, if you like, around Britain, they are polluted all around the world. Our rivers, our fresh water, our forests, all around the world. Slavery now is a trade that is conducted all around the world. Drugs, everything is happening in this massive. Our financial system, our economy, everything. When a pin drops one place, as we already know, it will rebound and react all around the world. And this, of course, applies for beautiful and wonderful and, and good things as well. Of course it does. But while we are prodigiously clever, it does not appear to me that we have yet managed to find wisdom. So our prodigious cleverness just exerts itself and moves and moves, but the majority of that cleverness is directed towards things that will serve and benefit a few in the short term, nobody in the long term. This is our place. It is an extraordinary time in history. It feels like we have never been further from home and we have never been closer. So many of the speakers have spoken to us today about all kinds of opportunities and possibilities which brave souls are making happen. Things are happening, an amazing potential for change. But we do have to ask ourselves some questions that relate to things like, what is the purpose? What are we seeking to build? How can we come together again? How, how can we find each other? Now, it was some years ago, and I was working with a, uh, some colleagues from, uh, uh, from WWF on their One Planet Leaders program. And we were doing some work with a large multinational. And on this particular day, we were trying to persuade this high-performing team, and it needed to be a high-performing team, we, we wanted to persuade this high-performing team to operate to a series of, prin of principles which were based around loosely what we would call sustainability. Now, we've been at this 24 hours and we're into the second day, and it was very clear that we were losing the argument. We had wheeled in all kinds of different consultants and experts and we had done everything we could to convince them that this was worth their while to be going down this route. And this, these people were as, as lovely and as, as, as sort of indifferent as most normal average groups of people, but we were not succeeding. And in desperation, really, in the last couple of hours or so, Together with my colleagues, I said, look, we, we, want, we want to invite you to do something. Our arguments seem to have not be falling on deaf ears. We would like to uh, dare you to do something. Are you, we're going to ask you a question. We dare you to answer it truthfully and honestly from your heart. Are you willing to do this? And this seemed to work because they liked the idea of being dared. And so they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. And we got them, I said, come and sit in the circle. And they came and sat in the circle and I asked them this question. What is it that you most deeply and profoundly love? And you promised that you'd answer this to the depth of your capacity, truthfully, honestly, from your heart. What is it that you most deeply and profoundly love? And it's a group of senior executives in a large corporate that you know well. And we were the third person in before we got the first tears. In the break that happened in the middle of this, I had one of them next to me convulsed in tears, just a waterfall of tears. 
Each one took that dare and they spoke about what they loved. And what did they speak about? They spoke about what every people around this earth always speak about when they go to those same things. They spoke about their children. They spoke about their lover, their partner, their wife, their husband. They spoke about their dear friends. They spoke about beautiful places in nature. They spoke about times when they've sat together, often on a balcony, beautiful evening glass of wine or whatever it is that took their fancy with the moon shining as two people together or a group of people together shared their hearts with each other about what it is, the joy of knowing each other, touching each other's lives. It's always the same. When we got round to the end of the circle, I said, you know, my friends, we... We spent 48 hours trying to persuade you to get behind this thing that we call sustainability. But you have just described the world that we were speaking about. It's the same thing. It's a world where everything that is beautiful has true, true, deep value. This is the world. This is the sustainable world. Why would we not choose to put all that professional competence, all that brilliance, all of that towards those things that we love. Why would we not choose to do that? So that group took on the challenge and uh, my work with them finished, so I have no knowledge as to what moved on from that point. But there are three questions that I would offer you to go away with the end of today to carry. And I I don't think it's my place somehow to dare you, but I invite you to carry these three questions and to consider the implications. Were you, were I, to live my, our lives aligned with the answers to these questions? What is it that you most deeply and profoundly love? If you, first of all, if answers jump immediately to your mind, you know, and you and you think, oh, I, 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 yes, I know that, I've got that. Then you, I would, my feeling probably you haven't, because it's a journey. It's a journey into depth. What is it that I truly? deeply and profoundly love. For instance, I love my son, but do I love yours? Would I lift a finger for yours? We saw some photographs of some school children in there. Do we love them? Would we, lift, would we inconvenience ourselves for them? When we know what we love, we know what we stand by, we know what we stand for. And were we to betray that, then we have betrayed everything. We have betrayed who we are, haven't we? Yet so many of us, I certainly, so many of us live our lives disconnected from that which we love. Disconnected from those little children whose faces we saw. As if they are not part of our world. When we know what we love, we know what we stand by. And there is no greater sorrow and to move away and to betray that which you love, to move away from that which you stand by. It's a question will take you into some frightening territory, I think, but I really invite you. But let me just add this one thing. When we have taken this question with, I have to say, many, many people, the greatest tears that have flowed from that question have come were articulated by a young woman who came to me afterwards and said, my answer to that question, what is it that you most deeply and profoundly love is, 
I never have. I don't think I ever have deeply and profoundly loved. I'm not sure if I know. We had a woman like that who came to Embercumar Valley in Devon one time, and she was 30, one, two, three, with three months to live. This was one of her greatest pains. I'm not sure if I have ever properly loved. I have spent a lifetime defending myself. I have spent a lifetime calculating risks of how to the the degree to which I make myself vulnerable and in never allowing myself to do that, I can never properly love. I've spent my lifetime being irritated with my parents and occasionally thinking, I guess I love them or with my siblings or I have spent my life in a job that I certainly did not love and I have spent my weekends doing things that I'm not sure really were so much orientated with what I love question many people have when they follow down that trail is, I am not sure if I ever have. Were we to redesign our society, would we not take this question? Would this question not thread its way through every part, all the way into our universities, all the way through our work, all the way to our elders and to our death? The second question, what are your deepest and most profound gifts? Not what are you qualified in, not, not about your competence, not really about, about sort of, you know, whatever you've trained in. What are your gifts? Now, it's an alien concept to many of our society, the notion even that we have gifts. The indigenous people who taught me, they said when a human being is created, creation lodges a tiny little bit of genius inside that human soul. And when is born, their task is to discover that gift, to discover it, develop it, bring it to potential and then share it forward, extend it generously. This is my gift to you. What is the truth for many people when they have driven their way down the pathway of this question? The truth for many people is I don't think I have one. I think that when creation sort of was scattering the gifts around, they kind of missed me out because I'm, who am I? I'm, I'm not particularly intelligent, I'm not particularly good looking, I'm, I'm rather average, my, my talents, everything about me is a bit, in fact, even though I bluster my way through life and I sort of pretend of certain things that in the coldness of the evening time when I'm sat alone by my fire or I go to my bed or I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror, I'm not quite sure of the degree of value that I carry. What are my gifts? Were we to create an education system that would help our children feel good about who they are, really good about who they are, would we get half the problems that we then get later on? Were we to say that they're every, were we to just make the assumption that located in the gut of every human being, there is a gift find, seeking to find its way out, and then that we would help that person find that place where they can be and feel good about who they were and share that gift. Picasso is meant to said, but I don't think he actually did, but the meaning of life is to find your gift, the purpose of life is to give it away. And the third question, what are my deepest and most profound responsibilities? In some ways, it's the least favorite question. What are my deepest and most profound responsibilities? You see, it brings me back to your child, your daughter, your sister, your brother, your friend, do I carry any responsibility for them?
I think where we were, where I, because I feel it is, it's a daily practice, were you, go back out into this beautiful island, determined that during the period of time that you have on this earth that you will discover, that I will discover deeper and deeper and deeper what it is that I most deeply and profoundly love. Were I to do the same in excavating my gifts and developing to the point where they have real power and impact, were I to become cognizant of the responsibilities that I carry, I think we sentence ourselves to happiness. I think there's, there's no way this is not a life filled with joy, for it has meaning and it has purpose. And it is there in service. So I would say, though I love very much the best place to live in the world, I do wonder about the best, best place in the world for the world. Thank you.